This video has a lot of twists and turns, so please don't form an opinion of it until you've watched the whole thing and know the full story. Also, please don't contact anyone that's mentioned in this video. If you feel like you want to make your opinion known, please use the comments. Thanks. Now you've probably heard of the YouTuber Riffs Beards and Gear. He's also commonly known as Fluff. He's got a few video series and one of them, his newest one, is called Ridiculous Reverb Listings. I've only watched a couple of them, but overall I, I liked what I saw. Light-hearted making fun of scalping gear prices. In fact, I've done something similar, albeit my video was a little bit more ranty. But overall, same message. Anyway, in Fluff's most recent episode, he showed a Tom DeLong Gibson signature guitar. Another DeLong. First line of production, 2003, Gibson Tom DeLong Signature ES333. $7,500 with a $100 shipping tag. Maybe Tom licked the back of the headstock or farted on it. You know what? If he farted on it, word up. Here's your $7,500. An expensive guitar for sure, but is it overly expensive? In February of 2020, one sold for that price. And in fact, right now, there's one for $8,000 plus 400 shipping. The higher end of the market for that guitar, but then again, it is an 18 year old discontinued signature Gibson. So I, I don't know. Now he reads out the description. This here is a 2003 Gibson ES333. Check out the YouTube link. Extremely rare and hard to find with the original paint, no repairs and in great condition. This guitar was created in 2003 before Gibson released the custom shop models. Wow, that is a special guitar. And here's where things start to go downhill. So here's a few problems with this listing. And I'm not even gonna look at these photos. Because notice they don't, uh, they don't show a serial number either. So, my a dear friend of mine, who I will not name, uh, was Tom's actual rep at Gibson and made this guitar happen at Gibson. So that's that this is my this is the source of my info. In 2003 Tom was very much still playing Fender guitars because he had a signature model with them and was contractually obligated to play Fenders. There was no way that Gibson made made this guitar for Tom in 2003. This is not a production model in 2003 at this point. Now I googled the years of production and I got 2003. I can't verify if this information is correct, I have no reason to believe that it isn't, but it is just a Google search, so it, it might be, but that's what I got. B, there were no such thing as custom shop versions of this guitar, in, you know, released for the public. The custom shop versions is what Tom actually played for his personal guitars. This was never a custom shop guitar. I'm not a Gibson expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I did Google this model and its custom shop variant, but I found multiple with Gibson custom COAs and the Gibson custom cases, so I, I don't know. Also, this guitar came out in like 2006 or seven, at the earliest, not 2003. Again, the information that I found says different. Nope, sorry, try again. Also, fuck you. Doesn't really end it in the most polite manner, and he may have got a few things wrong. I'm not really fussed about that. I don't really care. We're all self-appointed on this platform, so there's bound to be mistakes that are made. It's just what happens. But this story continues. After that video, the guy who made that listing must have been contacted by viewers because he amended the description to say this. If any of you viewed the YouTube video by channel Riffs, Beards and Gear about this guitar, Please understand, all of his videos are filled with false information. And it is unfortunate that this is how he decides to try make a living, barely hitting 40,000 a year, I'm sure, with that 300,000 following. Please note the updated pictures featuring the serial number and the email from Gibson verifying the year in which this guitar was made. This YouTuber does not know anyone that Tom worked with and should count his lucky stars that anyone wants to hear him rant about things he definitely cannot afford without starving his family for two weeks. Thank you. Again? not the most polite way possible, and he went off on some random tangent about income for whatever reason, but then again I can't really cite him for not being happy because the last thing that Fluff said to him was also fuck you. So I can understand why he'd be uh, a little bit angry at this. 
Fluff either kept tabs on this listing or something that was far more likely is that viewers were on that listing and saw this amended post, took screenshots and sent it to him. Either way, he posted this screenshot to both his Twitter and his YouTube community pages. Obviously, this is where things go bad. Firstly, the guy's listing was suspended, something that Fluff retweeted. This means that that listing was reported en masse, Reverb took it down, checked that there was nothing wrong with it, and then just put it back up. But it's just not cool. Then, of course, there were comments made on Fluff's posts, and this is the comment that made me want to make this video. Some absolute moron says, Everybody spam him with $1 offers. LOL. 130 likes. The first reply to that? Fluff. He says, OMG. And uh, to be honest, I'm getting some serious Adam Holy shit vibes from it. It's vague enough to argue that it was an OMG, please don't do this, but from where I'm sitting, it looks like an endorsement. And of course, in that thread, people were confirming that they did or were doing that. And there was even comments in that thread celebrating that the guy had taken his listing down. Yay, high five guys, we bullied somebody off the internet. What the f- Now a day later, Fluff came back to that community post and pinned a comment saying this. Now that he has added more info and pictures, etc., I personally think this is likely one of Tom's personal prototypes. This still was not a production guitar in 2003, though. The only ones that existed were Tom's personal guitars at the time. But I was working with the info I had in front of me at the time. So... Now, to me, that's kind of an I was wrong, but I wasn't really wrong type thing. Saying something, but not really saying anything. But overall, I was just really disappointed in Fluff, especially with his reaction to what was a request of targeted harassment against just some random guy. Fluff later deleted that community post. So anyway, here's where that story gets a little bit better. I was very angry when I saw this, and I sent a DM to Fluff. I explained the situation, I explained how I felt, and told him that I really thought that the reverb seller deserved an apology from him. And this was Fluff's statement. So I am always trying to inject some element of comedy with my initial reaction to any given listing. The fuck you bleep was actually used heavily in that episode. The comedy being I generally never cuss in any of my videos. What I communicated poorly in the video was basically he was asking crazy prices with no proof of what he said it was. After the fact he did upload proof as to what the guitar actually is, which is likely an original prototype in fact, while also saying not great things about me which is fine. Where it went sideways was after he revised his listing, I started getting sent screen caps and people were already circling the listing. I absolutely did share that screen cap out of shock, but it was after I did that the listing went offline. I didn't know if he took it down or what, so I did a pin comment and tweeted that in fact the guitar looks legit before deciding to just delete the posts because the update wasn't getting eyes on it. But in the end of the day, that is definitely not cool, and I did reach out to David and did apologize. He also apologized to me as well. And here's the screen cap that Fluff sent of his apology. Now, I think he handled that pretty well, and it's a nice happy ending to this story. And I told Fluff I wanted to do this video as kind of a message and a, a lesson. And he was fine with that message, so here it is. This whole issue just started out as two guitar geeks arguing over dates of production of a guitar. Like, how nerdy can you get? But where it went bad was when an audience turned into participants. This is not how it should be. People can and should be criticized, but when hundreds of people personally contact someone, that can be death by a thousand cuts for someone who isn't able to take it. So if I haven't made myself clear, if your favorite YouTuber is criticizing somebody or something, it's absolutely fine to say your opinion in the comments section. But when you take it out of there, even if you think you're helping that YouTuber, you're not. As proven in this story, you're hindering them. So please, do not do that. Alright, so there's your Aesop's Fable for today. Um, have a great day, and please don't contact anybody I've mentioned in this video. If you do, I will be very, very unhappy, and we can't be friends. Alright, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.